Research by Elsevier shows that Q1 journals reject up to 9 out of 10 of all submitted papers. So if you're tired of or worried about your papers being rejected from Q1 journals, this video will show you exactly how to get 3 papers accepted in Q1 journals this year. The number one reason why editors and reviewers of Q1 journals reject papers is lack of or an insignificant contribution to the field. For example, when Venon et al. analyzed 898 paper rejections, they found that the most common rejection reason was lack of novelty. Similarly, research by Argerfolk points to insignificant or insufficient theoretical contribution of the paper as a very common reason for rejection. So the first step to avoid the rejection fate of 90% of all submitted papers is to have a research topic that offers a significant novel contribution to your field. And a bonus of having that topic is that, according to research by Wang, Song and Barbasi published in the journal Science, the perceived importance and relevance of your topic is the best predictor of the long-term impact your paper will have as measured by the citations of your paper. In other words, the more relevant and the more impactful your topic, the more citations you're going to get, which will give you more authority and more chances of getting tenure and advancing your academic career. So how do you get a novel topic that makes a real contribution to your field? First of all, the basic step is to find the research gap. Meaning, you want to look at lack of research on a particular topic, in a particular part of the world, on a particular group of people, or maybe using a specific methodology. You can also look at problems with previous studies, such as a small sample size. Or number three, in terms of the research gap, you can look at a lack of research consensus on a particular issue, or a practical problem that hasn't been solved yet. However, finding the research gap through these four steps is so basic that everybody in your field will be doing this. So if you really want to stand out from the research crowd, you need to look outside of your discipline to find novel topics. To give you a practical example, let's say, like me, you're interested in discrimination in the field of teaching English. So if you look at research gaps within teaching English, you might find topics that make some contribution. But to have truly impactful topics, you want to look at how researchers in other fields related to teaching English, maybe, have been studying discrimination. For example, in education overall, or even further away, in psychology, neuroscience, um, in sociology, in economics. This will allow you to see more unexplored avenues for potential research topics that make your contribution very novel and very significant, because other researchers in your field are very unlikely to do this. So the first step to avoid journal rejections is to have a high impact topic that makes a significant contribution to your field. And if you want a step-by-step -step process for finding that high impact topic, head to our free published researcher community, go to the classroom, and then you will see a module on finding the research gap and finding high impact research topics. If you ask journal reviewers and editors what's the second big, big reason papers get rejected, they'll mention issues to do with methodology. For example, poorly designed studies, small sample size, errors in data analysis. These are just some examples. So how do you prevent this type of rejection? The easiest way, especially as an early career researcher or a PhD student, is to follow a proven methodological approach. Unlike with the research topic, with the methodology it doesn't pay off to be different. So in practical terms, analyze the methodological approaches used by similar papers that study similar topics. What sample size do they use? How do they collect data? How do they analyze data? What research tools were used? And then do something very similar, adapted, of course, to your research topic. This ensures that you're following a well-trodden path in terms of methodology. So your paper is much more likely to be accepted because you're going to avoid most of the common mistakes and reasons for rejection because, again, you're following the methodology of previous published researchers. Now, even if you have a truly groundbreaking topic, even if you've designed and conducted your study following the highest methodological standards, your paper might still get rejected. And the reason for that is what I call a high impact package. Look, we all judge the book by its cover. 
In fact, first impressions are formed within milliseconds. That's faster than the camera shutter and 200 times faster than the blink of your eye. And journal reviewers are no different. They'll form the first impression about your paper very, very quickly. Maybe not within milliseconds, but certainly within the first couple of minutes. And what the brains are looking for is a known pattern. So being different here doesn't pay off either. You want to blend here in two important ways. First of all, you want to structure your paper in a way that is expected of Q1 journals of that particular journal. And number two, you want to express your research ideas in a way that is consistent with the journal style and that is expected of you if you want to publish in Q1 journals. The more you fit in here, the better. It will be easier for the reviewer to follow your paper. You'll be immediately also associated with other successful published researchers. So how do you apply this in practice? First of all, you want to study how other more successful published researchers package their ideas. Crucially, you want to look at the researchers who focus either on a similar topic, use a similar methodology, write a similar type of paper. So first of all, look at the overall structure of that paper and prepare an outline. And then note down exactly what happens step by step in each section of the paper. What elements are included? What is the first paragraph of the introduction about? What are the following two paragraphs about? How does the researcher present the research gap and where is it done specifically? Look at how long each section and each element is. The more detailed you make this, the higher your acceptance rate to Q1 journals will be. And I know this is going to take some initial time and effort, but trust me, the more detailed you make it, the more papers are going to be accepted in better journals. And then once you've done it, you want to develop a blueprint just like this one with all the elements that need to be included, the purpose, the length. And this will make writing your paper so much easier. It will also give you confidence because you are going to organize your paper in a proven way that gets you published in Q1 journals. By the way, if you want to save yourself some time and just get this blueprint that I've developed after working with over 850 PhD students and researchers, you can click on the link in the description to go to our free community and then it's pinned right at the top of the community there. Now, the second aspect of that high impact package is language. So once you have the structure, you wanna analyze how researchers do different things in the paper in terms of language. So, for example, if the first paragraph of the introduction expresses the importance of the topic, how do the researchers actually do it in practice? What language do they use? And then you can fill in that blueprint that I was just showing you here with useful phrases. Obviously, you don't need 20 phrases for each element of the paper. Three to five will be sufficient but note down how exactly researchers are expressing their research ideas in each specific aspect of the paper. As you see, scientific writing is very formal-like. Even though there are different disciplines and journals might have different standards, 80% of scientific writing is very, very similar. There are proven ways in which published researchers highlight the gap, present the methodology, discuss findings, make suggestions for future research. So why would you reinvent the wheel and make a ton of mistakes trying to be different? If you want to publish papers in Q1 Scopus Index journals and avoid those rejections, then you want to follow a proven high impact package. So now you have a groundbreaking topic. You've conducted a rigorous study. You've wrapped it all up in a high impact package. But there's one more very important reason why papers get rejected by Q1 journals without even being sent for review. In fact, when Venon et al. analyzed 898 rejected papers, they found that this was the second most common reason for rejections right after a lack of novel contribution. And when you understand it, it's actually so simple. You'll be able to avoid 90% of rejections and get your papers published in better journals much faster. To illustrate what I mean here, just imagine you've been invited to a fancy dinner party at a fancy hotel just like this. Now, if you show up to this fancy dinner party at a fancy hotel looking like this, you'll probably get a few surprise looks at best. 
and at worst, you'll be kicked out straight away. It's not that there's something wrong per se intrinsically with your outfit, it's just that this particular outfit doesn't fit this particular fancy occasion. Similarly, if your surfing buddies invited you to go surfing um, and you showed up like this, you'd also get a few strange looks at best. And at worst, your buddies will stop speaking to you and inviting you to surfing trips. Again, not because intrinsically there's something wrong with that outfit, but just this fancy outfit does not fit the occasion of going surfing at a beach with your buddies. So think of the occasion or the event as the journal. It's got a predefined list of topics it's interested in, it only accepts specific types of papers, it has a specific audience in mind, and you can't change these conditions. That's why you have to match your paper or the outfit that you're wearing to the right event or occasion, which is the journal. If you do this, you will very nicely fit in and make the right first impression on the editor. And if you don't, well, then you will look like this guy dressed up for a dinner party trying to go surfing, just out of place. So if you want to avoid the fate of 90% of papers, which is rejection, and if you want to publish your papers regularly in Q1 Scopus journals, you need to have high impact topics, follow a proven methodology, wrap it all up in a high impact package and find the right publishing outlet for your paper. But how do you do this without working 60 or more hours every single week, feeling stressed and overwhelmed? This next video will show you exactly how you can publish more papers while actually working less. So watch this video next.